today we are doing 6-6 six, six, factor by grouping. This is when we have four or more terms that we have to factor. You'll be doing page 282, 1 through 28 odd. I'm going out of order because 6-5 is a little bit more difficult. And since we will have a quiz on Monday, quiz on Monday, quiz, I believe it's 3-8 um, on 6.1 through 6.6, .6, not including, not 6.5. Um, 6.6 is a little bit easier than 6.5, and so I just wanted a little bit more time with 6.5. So um, we are doing this out of order, and then we'll be back to 6.5 on um, Tuesday. Okay? Oh, dear. And here we go. That was my cat. All right, so... <clears throat> We use this method when we have four or more um, uh, factors, okay? So, when I in order to do a GCF, or greatest monomial factor, we have to look at each term and see if they have anything in common. So, notice here we have an X and an X in common, so we can factor an X out. Now, be careful. When we factor that out, it doesn't disappear. It goes to the outside of a parenthesis, and I'm left with x plus 3. Everything else, all I did was pull the x out. It's outside the parenthesis. You have to write it. Okay? When we factor, and so this is a monomial factor, and this is what we call a binomial factor, okay? So we factored a monomial out. Um, the next part... See, I'm, I'm plugging in, so it might change my whole screen. Um, the next part is here I have a binomial in common, right? A binomial in common. And so when I factor that out, when I factor the... I can take the whole binomial out because out of both terms, right? This has a binomial of y plus 5, and so does this. So when I take... Notice I pulled it out once. I pulled an x here... Here, it came out, and I only wrote it once, right? So I'm going to pull that same common factor. We're going to pull it out, y plus 5. And then what we're left with is a plus b, right, times a plus b. What's left over is this and this, okay? So we're factoring out the binomial factor, okay? Everything else that's left goes in the other parenthesis. Okay, we're getting pretty close. So that is a binomial factor, and the other one is a binomial factor now. So when we have four terms, we can, like, group them into groups of two. Okay. Hold on, let's get to walk on the keyboard. We can, we can group them by groups of two. So, for instance... Uh, We've got A, I can take the first two, A, M, time plus 4, A. What do they have in common in those two factors? They have an A, so I'm going to pull it out, and what's left is M plus 4. And look, what, else, what can I pull out of this factor, right? Positive. Okay, I can pull out a positive 3. And then when I divide 3 by 3m, I'm left with an m. When I divide 12 by 3, I'm left with positive 4. Now we have that common binomial factor. So now we have still two terms. Okay, we're going to pull m plus 4 out, the binomial factor of m plus 4. And what's left, everything that's left is that a plus 3. That's what we call factor by grouping. Okay? All right. Let's see how my... All right. So let's just let's take baby steps, okay? This is the number one. Is it... Uh, this is a term, and this is a term. What do they have in common? 
we can factor out the, y, the binomial factor of y plus 3, and then what's left is the x plus k. Stays in the parentheses. Number 2, we can factor out. Actually, why don't you do 2 and 3 on your own? Go. All right, let's check our work. So we're going to factor out x plus 2, and what's left goes in the parentheses, x squared plus 3. Number 3, we're going to factor out t minus 4. What's left is the 5 minus x. Now, you get to add your own parentheses. Okay, let's take a group, make the first two a group. Notice all four don't have a common factor. But these... If you fa group them in two, let's see. Um, I can In the first one, I can pull out an A, and I'm left with P minus 3. I'm going to pull out the A, right? And in the second one, I can pull out a positive B, and we are left with P minus 3. So if I pull out my binom common binomial factor of P minus 3, then everything we're left with goes in the other parentheses. Okay, let's try it again. Uh, why don't you pause the recording and you try it. Now let's check our work. I'm going to factor out an, an A. And what I'm left with is, when I divide the first one, AB by A, I'm left with just B. When I divide a by a, I'm left with minus 1, right? There's a negative there, and a divided by a is 1. And in the second binomial, I can factor out a positive c. And when I'm left, what I'm left with is uh, b minus c. Oops, b minus 1, sorry. c divided by c is a 1. Okay, so now we can pull out the binomial factor, b minus 1, and what's left is a plus c. All right, pause the recording if you need to take notes. Sometimes these might not be in order. Let's see, do you want me to put that back? Okay, just so you can see it. Okay, sometimes these may not be in order, so you might have to move things around. Because you notice that every time, it, like when we factor it, it miraculously gives us a binomial that's in common. So you may have to move things around. Um, so you'll notice if I were to just um, put my parentheses group, make groups of two here, just the way they are, there's no common factor here. Okay? So what we're going to have to do is kind of move things. I can put the 3a with the ax and the 3x with the x squared. Let's see. Let's try. Let's see where we're going. There's probably, I could also do, I could do 3x with 3a and ax with x squared. It doesn't matter. Just pick one way where you can get common factors of both. And you're going to say, look, there's nothing we can do. So we're going to move things around. We're just going back and saying, so. All right, so now we're moving. I could have done it the other way, too. I could have, like, what, like, I'm moving this, this, and this together, but I could have also moved 3x with 3a. Right? I could have done that. And plus x squared... plus ax. So I could have done that too. Okay. So here we're going to group it. And we can pull out the factor of x and I'm left with x plus 3. And I'm going to pull out the factor of, let's see, a, positive a, and we're left with x plus 3, then we can factor out that binomial factor, x plus 3, and everything that's left goes here, x plus a. Okay? Now, 
uh, I'm going to actually, let's write down the order so you can take the notes to the right. Okay, write down the directions so you have something to look back on. Okay, now had I done the other way, let's, let me just show you. If I had done, what did I say? Um, AX plus, so let's go X squared plus AX plus 3X plus 3A, okay? If we factor that way, it will still work too. So I'm factoring out an X and I'm left with X plus A. I'm going to factor out a plus 3 and I'm left with X plus, oops, X plus A. So we can factor out our X plus A. What's left is everything else, X plus 3. So we're just factoring. Our common binomial factor just changes to the other. Like up here, the common binomial factor was X plus 3, but over here, the common binomial factor is X plus A, which is this one. Okay, so just put it in an order where you can group two at a time and see if it works. All right, let's try some more. Okay, try reordering and go. All right, let's check our work. So we're going to factor, how about uh, NX and 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 2x and then 3n plus 6. So as I factor this, now all you're looking for is did you get the right answer because you put it could have grouped it differently. So I'm factoring out an x and then I'm left with n plus 2, right? When I factor that out, I'm left with the n and the 2. Close it up. Oh, there you go. Then when I factor out here, I'm going to factor out a positive 3, and we are left with n plus 2, okay? So I have x plus 3. Oh, I guess I should have done that last. So we're factoring the binomial. doesn't really matter which one you write first, as long as you have the correct binomials, and then we're left with x plus 3. Okay, let's try the next one. Pause the recording and try it. Okay, let's check our work. Um, go with what they're doing. So we have to re move it around. I can put the x cubed and the 5x squared, I think, together. Oh, look, they're doing it here, too. I'm going to do the x cubed. Oh, they didn't do the 5x squared, but we can do that afterwards. So the x cubed and the 2x. So I'm going to group those two and pull out an x, and I'll be left with x squared plus 2, right? To group those two, I'll be left with, when I pull out an x, I'm left with x squared plus 2. Lady! Sorry about that. Okay. Next, I'm going to factor out a negative 5. And I'm left with x squared. Negative 10 divided by negative 5 is positive 2. Oh, I factored out that negative 5, right? Lady! Sorry. So now we have our, our binomial factor of x squared plus 2. Notice I factored out the negative. I don't know why that was so internal to me, and I didn't even think about pointing that out to you. They were both negatives. So I thought, I, I looked at this, and I, I just knew it had to be positive. How would I make it positive? A negative divided by a negative here would be a positive here. Okay, so I factored out my, my binomial factor, and everything that's left is x minus 5. Okay, now let's try it the other way. We'll do it, they'll do it the other way. So we could, have, if you happen to organize it, like, um, what did I say before? Um, x cubed minus 5x squared, that's right. 
Um, then we can factor out an x in the first binomial, and I'm left with x minus 5. I can factor out a positive 2. I'm left with x minus 5. We factor out the common binomial factor, x minus 5, and we are left with x squared plus 2. All right. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's talk about factoring out negatives, okay? Opposite factors. So, um, the op if x is the factor, the opposite would be negative x, okay? If 8 is the opposite, it would be negative 8. If it's x plus 3, the opposite factor would be negative x, negative 3 right? Negative times that quantity or negative x, negative 3. If I distribute it, we're just multiplying it, the whole binomial by the negative, taking the additive inverse. So now here's what I want you to pay attention to. If it's a minus b and I multiply a minus b, a minus b times that negative, right? It becomes negative a positive b. Can't we write that as b minus a? So what I want you to do is just jump right to that, is it flips it around, right? Negative times negative, I mean negative times positive is a negative, negative times negative is a positive. Okay. Let's try a few others. So, with that in mind, it flips it around, okay? So if I want this to be the opposite, if I, if I, I just multiply by a negative and it becomes 5 minus c. Okay, what would be the opposite of 5y squared minus 4? It would be 4 minus 5y squared. Why? Because we're multiplying it by a negative and flipping it around. Writing the positive one first. 2n minus 3 would be 3 minus 2n. Okay, rewrite each factor as a product of negative 1 and its opposite. So this would be negative 1, and the opposite of negative x is positive x, right? This would be negative 1 times negative b. Aren't they equivalent? Negative 1, and the opposite of negative a, negative 5 would be a plus 5. Okay, negative 1, and then we're going to go 4 minus x, right? Negative 1, and the opposite of this would be 3 minus 2n. Do you see how it flips it around? And we're going to need that. Negative 1 times 7 minus x squared. Negative 1 times p minus 2. Negative 1 times 5k minus 6. 5k squared, sorry. All right, now we're going to use that. Um, so here we go. We are going to group our, do our groups. Let's go here. First, I'm going to do this. Let's see how they do it. Okay, these would be my, these would be my groups. Okay, and group two. Okay, when I pull out that x, I'm left with b minus nine, right? I'm left with b minus nine. Okay. When, now, if I pull that out, instead of pulling the I pull out 2, positive 2, I'm going to be left with 9 minus, minus b. That's not, it's opposite, right? If I pull out positive 2, then I'll be left with, what's left here is a, is a 9 and minus b. So I need it to be opposite. So instead of pulling out a negative 2, a positive 2, I'm going to pull out a negative 2, right? And then what we're left with is 18 divided by negative 2 is negative 9, right? 
and eight and negative two b divided by negative two is positive b. Now, isn't that the same thing as b minus nine? So we just go right for the opposite and turn it around. Right? Okay. We just go right for that opposite, turn it around, x times b minus 9. Now the common binomial factor is b minus 9, and what's left is x minus 2. Pause the recording if you want to write that. Okay, we are going to see how they did it. Let's see. And they say here it's 9 minus... Just turn it around and take out a negative, and so then it turns it around. I think you can do this all in one step, okay? There we go. Okay, pause the recording and try the next one on your own. Let's check our work. All right. Now, I'm going to show you both steps, but I think that we can just... If I pull out a K, I'm left with x squared minus 5. Okay, now I can pull out a negative 3. Negative 3. Now, when I pull out that negative, it's going to make 15 divided by negative 3 is going to be negative 5. I'm just putting it over here. Negative 3x squared divided by negative 3 is positive x squared. It just goes over here, right? And now what we have is that x squared minus 5, the binomial factor, and everything else that's left is k minus 3. Pause the, re next, the recording and try the next two on your own. Now let's check our work. Sometimes we only have to divide out a negative 1. If it doesn't look like anything can be pulled out, pull out a negative 1. If it flips it, then it's in common. All right, so here's the real deal. We're in the book. We're in another chapter. We factor least common denominator, okay? What's the GCF? We always ask ourselves first, what's the first thing we do? Is there a GCF? Well, I see a 2 in everything. And is there a P or is there an X? No, just a 2. So I'm going to factor out a 2, and I'm going to have PX plus 4P plus 3X plus 12. Okay, now I'm going to group it inside. I'm going to group it inside. I'm going to try it the way it is. So here I can pull out a P, and what's left is X plus 4. And then we can pull out a plus 3, and what's left is X plus 4. Okay? And so we have our original 2 that we have to bring down, and a lot of people make a mistake about that. And then we're going to pull out the binomial factor of X plus 4, and everything else that's left is p plus 3. Okay? There you go. Factor by grouping. Okay. We have another. Okay? So step one, is there a GCF? There is no GCF, but... Okay, let's factor by grouping. Let's try it. I'm going to pull out a y squared, and what I'm left with is the x squared. Pull out the y squared here, and I'm, I don't need to write times 1, but here, if there's nothing left, I have to write minus 1. And here, I have to pull out a negative 9, because I need that x squared to be positive. So I'm pulling out a negative 9, and then I'm left with 9 divided by negative 9 is negative 1. And over here, negative 9x squared divided by negative 9 
is negative. I'm sorry, is is negative. I was going to I don't know what I was doing there. Negative 9x squared divided by negative 9 is negative divided by negative is positive, and it's an x squared. So what we have is our binomial factor of x squared minus 1 times everything else that's left is, whoops, y squared minus 9. Now, listen up, little... <sighs> listen up. Here's where it gets... We're not done. I don't know what I was going to say. We are not done, so let's factor that. That is a difference of squares to x plus 2 times x minus 2. And this is a difference of squares to y plus 2 to y minus 2. And now we are done. And I believe that is our recording. I don't think there's any more. Okay. And that is our answer. Back.